Unit 10, The Past and the Future. Page 64, Exercise 2, Conversation. I'm good at history. Part A, Listen and Practice. Look, here's a quiz on events of the 20th century. Oh, let me give it a try. I'm good at history. All right. First question. When did World War I begin? I think it began in 1917. Huh. And how long has the United Nations been in existence? Uh, since Kennedy became president in 1961. Hmm. Next question. How long were the Beatles together? Well, they started in 1965 and broke up in 1980, so they were together for 15 years. So, how am I doing so far? Not very well. Not one of your answers is correct. Page 64, Exercise 2, Part B. Do you know the answers to the three questions in Part A? Listen to the rest of the conversation. What are the correct answers? So, what are the correct answers then? Well, World War I began in 1914 and ended in 1918. Oh, that's right. And the United Nations was formally established in 1945 following the end of World War II. And the Beatles? Well, they started back in 1960, and they broke up in 1970, so they were together for 10 years, not 15. Did I say I was good at history? Uh, I meant geography. Page 65, Exercise 3, Grammar Focus. Referring to time in the past. A point or period of time in the past. When did World War II take place? During the 1940s. In the 1940s. Over 70 years ago. How long were the Beatles together? From 1960 to 1970. For 10 years. A period of time that continues into the present. How long has the United Nations been in existence? Since 1945. Since World War II ended. For about the last 70 years. Page 65, Exercise 4, Pronunciation. Syllable stress. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice which syllable has the main stress in these four and five syllable words. Notice the secondary stress. Identify. Disadvantage. Communication. Sixty-five. Exercise 4. Part B. Listen to the words in the box. Which syllable has the main stress? Write the words in the correct column in Part A. Appreciate. Assassination. Catastrophe. Consideration. Conversation. Revolution. Seven, exercise 9. Perspectives. Part A. Listen to a survey about the future. Check the predictions you think will happen. What will the future hold? Computers will recognize any voice command. You won't need a keyboard. Within 20 years, scientists will have discovered a cure for baldness. People will be living in cities under the ocean. By 2025, world leaders will have eliminated terrorism. Robots will be performing most factory jobs. By 2050, 
We will have set up human communities on Mars. Medical scientists will find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. Sixty-seven, exercise ten, grammar focus. Predicting the future with will. Use will to predict future events or situations. Computers will recognize any voice command. You won't need a keyboard. Use future continuous to predict ongoing actions. People will be living in cities under the ocean. Use future perfect to predict actions that will be completed by a certain time. Within twenty years, scientists will have discovered a cure for baldness. By twenty fifty, we will have set up human communities on Mars. Sixty-eight. Exercise eleven. Listening. A perfect future. Part A. Listen to people discuss changes that will affect these topics of interest in the future. Write down two changes for each topic. One, work. Work, in the future? Well, I think unemployment will keep getting worse. I agree. As companies get more efficient and more computerized, they're finding ways of using less staff. So I guess people will find it hard to get a good job unless they have excellent qualifications. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably true. But I also think that because of computers, more and more people will be telecommuting instead of going into an office. Wow, I'd really love that. Can you imagine spending most of your work week in the comfort of your own home? Personally, I would get much more done. And with email, instant messaging, and video conferencing, you can still keep in touch with everyone you need to. Well, I'd certainly enjoy it, but I don't know if I'd get more done or not. I'm afraid I might just turn on the TV and zone out. Two, transportation. As far as transportation is concerned, I think there will be huge changes in the way people use cars. They'll probably have made laws about what kind of car you can own and when you can use it. And I bet it'll be impossible for people to use cars whenever they like. There'll just be too many of them on the roads. Exactly. People will have to take other modes of transportation, especially trains. Why do you say that? Well, we won't be able to use cars, and airports take up too much space. With the supply of land for airports shrinking around the world, there will be fewer airports and fewer plane flights. That leaves trains. Huh? So, do you think there will be more efficient train systems between cities? Sure. There may even be trains going under the oceans to connect the major continents. Under the oceans? Get out of here! I get nervous enough flying on a plane. Three, education. How do you think education will change in the future? I think kids are going to have to stay in school until they're older, maybe until they're twenty or twenty-one. Why? Well, one reason is that there won't be enough jobs for everyone, so it will be necessary to keep kids in school longer. Hmm. I think they will have found a way for us to learn without teachers. There will be computer learning programs that can teach you much more quickly than a teacher. And they'll also make learning much more fun. Are you saying that our teachers weren't any fun? Well, okay, maybe some of them were fun. Four, health. Every day you hear about some new medical breakthrough on the news. Yeah, and who knows what will happen in the next fifty years? I think in the next fifty years there will be new drugs that will help people lose weight permanently without dieting. And hopefully they will have found cures for many of the diseases that are around today, so people will live longer. How much longer do you think? I bet that within the next fifty years, most people will live to be over a hundred.
progress check. Page 71, Exercise 3, Listening. How good is your history? Part A. Listen to people discuss the questions. Write the correct answers. 1. What are you reading? I'm reading an article about the Iditarod. What's the Iditarod? It's a sled dog race in Alaska. I didn't know you liked dog racing. Well, not exactly, but it's interesting to read about anyway. Are you learning anything? Well, they've been doing it since 1973, and the race covers 1,150 miles. Wow, that's pretty far to go in all that snow and ice. 2. How long did apartheid exist in South Africa? Hmm, let's see. I know apartheid ended in 1991, but I'm not sure when it began. Well, I know it was after World War II. Yes, yes, you're right. It wasn't long after the war ended. I think it was in 1948. You're right. So apartheid existed from 1948 to 1991. Huh. Wow. 3. Dad, can you help me? What do you need? I'm writing this report for school. It's about the space program. I did my research at the library, but I forgot to look something up. What do you need to know? When did a spacecraft first land on Mars? Oh, I remember that. Mom was pregnant with you. It was in 1997. 1997. Thanks. I'm done. 4. What's that? It's a book about the Berlin Wall. Oh, wow. Look at these pictures. They're amazing. Yes. It's incredible to think about. The wall divided the city in half. How long was it up? For almost 30 years. Wow. 5. What are you doing? I'm working on this crossword puzzle. Oh, I love crossword puzzles. What clue are you working on? Well, here. The clue is, began in 1896. It starts with an O. I know this one. It's the Olympics. The Olympics have only been around since 1896? Well, yes. The modern Olympics. <laughs>